Okay, the following is an interview with uh, Eugene Gold, a district attorney of Brooklyn. Uh, why don't you, do, you know, tell us what you can tell or, or what you do know for a fact. There is apparent dissension amongst the organized crime circles in this city. What's going on? Well, there's, there's very little question but that there's a tremendous upheaval taking place uh, within the organized crime groups within the city. It's a struggle for money primarily and power secondly, the two being, of course, related. Uh, which results in the kind of action that we've seen over the past week and a half. Well, the action we've seen, we've seen a lot of killings. Right. Um, you feel the killings are related? Do you? Do you? I mean, do you honestly well, I feel there's a gang war going on? I think there's. A, I think there's an organized crime war going on. I don't think anyone can question that. Uh, the the second question is whether all of the killings that have taken place are directly related to this war. I don't believe that's true. I mean, there, is, there are perhaps one or two at least that were not related to this present situation. This kind of personnel changes? Well, there are personnel changes apparently starting at the top in the death of Joey Gallo himself. Uh, but I think even more, more importantly, with the, there's a tendency to exaggerate and find that every killing that takes place now is related to this uh, turmoil. When the fact is, I don't think that's true. This, to a large extent, it is true, but not completely. What about Joey Gallo? Um, he never really was, a, according to your intelligence or others that I've been told by your office, a, a first-line, big-time gangster, was he? Well, I, I wouldn't put him in the, in the class of uh, some others that you could refer to. Uh, he was, uh, began some 10 or 12 years ago with the original Profaci War uh, in an effort to take over a greater part of organized crimes operation. He never reached that point. Uh, one reason being that he went to jail. Uh, secondly, that uh, they just wouldn't permit him to. What about Gallo's gang today? What are they doing? They're still in existence. Most of them presently are sleeping at, on President Street altogether. Why? I suppose they're very much concerned about being out on the street alone. I mean, is that purely defensive, or do, or do you have oh, any yes. idea? Oh, yes. That, that is defensive. This isn't the first time that this is t that has taken place. It's happened before. It's a defensive measure. What position do the law enforcement officials, are you somewhat reduced to standing outside President Street and watching to see what will happen next? Well, we've, we've had the, uh, most of these people under surveillance for more than a year. But obviously, they don't commit murders and they don't plan these things in the presence of uh, the undercover people he, we have making surveillance on them. Uh, realistically, you're not going to stop a killing that they're determined to make. That's not just not going to happen. On the other hand, we, we've got to be concerned that innocent people aren't affected by it. And by having this kind of surveillance, we reduce the possibility of someone becoming innocently involved and killed. My sense of the public's general feeling is that it's just mobsters shooting each other, and who cares? I think pretty much the, the, the feeling isn't as strong as it should be. Uh, the Why? public should be very much more concerned than they are. Why? Because the organized crime has a daily impact on the lives of each and every one of us. Their infiltration of a legitimate business, for example, loan sharking, gambling, illegal gambling. And we have the public is providing the money, the resources, to continue organized crime, in addition to the fact that they permit the infiltration of organized crime into so-called legitimate business, their failure to cooperate with law enforcement, and come to us when problems arise, when there's an attempted extortion and that kind of thing. Well, the mobsters shoot you if you go to the police. I think that's greatly exaggerated. It has happened. No one can, no one can quarrel with that. But it happens very, very rarely that someone who is not actually part of the mob operation is killed. Generally, that's, that's happened among each other. They kill each other, but rarely do they go beyond that. And I think, therefore, the, the, the playing up of that feature of it does a disservice to all of us because it induces people not to come to us, whereas if they did, I think we can do much more in terms of organized crime. Well, if the mob isn't shooting us, what are they doing to us? Well, they, you mean, I'm not quite sure I follow that. Well, you say they're not shooting us. I mean, I, is your basis then that they're, they're robbing us? Or, you know, what is oh, the mob? Oh, absolutely. The mob I mean, is Why should I care about the mob and the mobs if they're out there shooting each other? Well, why you, do I care? You should care because organized crime, of which this warfare is a part, is directly related 
to the need of organized crime to make money. It's a power struggle for money. They make money by being in the illegal, illegal gambling business. They make it from narcotics. They make it from prostitution. They make it from loan sharking. They make it from the infiltration into legitimate businesses. The ownership, undercover ownership of nightclubs, automobile dealerships, trucking firms, the rigging of prices, the manufacturers in the garment center. So that we are paying for what they take out by way of milking from these businesses. We're paying more money for the products we buy. And yet we enjoy the mobster story. Well, it's a very dramatic thing. It's, I suppose, life uh, at its, in its rawest form, and it's an attractive kind of thing. It's very similar to courtroom drama. People are fascinated by it, and they look at it too frequently as spectators, rather than recognizing that they are really a part of this, that they're being affected by it every single day. Why don't you stop the... Uh, that really isn't a reasonable thing. Why don't you stop it? There's no way to stop it, I guess. You know, what I'm getting at, it seems to be revealed that by just by the virulence of this gang war, that organized crime is still very much alive, and what they're really doing is fighting over our money, which seems to indicate there's a lot of our money out there to be fought over. I don't think there's any, any question about that at all. They're fighting over our money. Now, the, the difficulty in doing something about it is the size of the structure, the code of silence which does exist, the failure of the community at large to cooperate with us. What's the answer? I suppose the answer is that we need better public understanding of, of what organized crime means, of what it does, its effect upon them. That uh, hopefully would lead to better cooperation, inducing legitimate businessmen that the making of money cannot be the sole objective of being in business, which then induces them to permit organized crime members to be part of their enterprise that we've got to make a better effort to create a moral tone which will prevent the community from people as individuals from dealing with it. You know, as an average citizen, aside from organized crimes activities, just taking the killings in itself, I mean, is there any aspect of it? It's one mobster wiping out another mobster and that takes it off your back. Uh, should I really care that these mobsters are out shooting each other? Well, I think one should care, if, uh, regardless of how they themselves might feel, those in organized crime, uh, I think we've all got to be concerned about killing. If we're not concerned about one killing, the tendency will be to not to be concerned about another killing. Killing is wrong. It's something that affects all of us. Violence is wrong. And this is a manifestation of a, of a society that has become much too violent. And I think we've got to be concerned about killings generally, no matter who the people are. But the other part of it is, of course, the relationship of this kind of war to the community at large, to war each and every one of us, what effect it has when it's, when it's resolved, when the compromises are made, when peace is made through intermediaries of their own, that we're going to be paying for that peace. What do you think is really the news story here? I mean, they are killing each other, obviously. You say the public's fascinated by it. Well, what do you think is really the news story here? Well, I think the news story really comes down to the impact of organized crime on and the organized, when, when the war is solved, the story lies in what happens to us because organized crime exists. That's the real story. This is only one, in, it, this is internal. This affects only them as to who shall be making the money that they're going to take from you and me. But the real story is what can we do and what should we be doing to put a stop to organized crime? Well, obviously, we're not, uh, whatever we have done or trying to do isn't working. It's not working. It's not enough. And there are many reasons for it. One of them, greed. The greed on the part of supposedly innocent and uh, honest people. Big business who have dealt directly with organized crime because of the need, the greed, to make money. Because of the natural instinct of man to gamble. Gambling with bookmakers and failing to understand that you're putting money into the pocket of the organized criminal who then uses that money for loan sharking, who uses it for narcotics, who uses it then to take over legitimate businesses. All right. Um, way white again. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I think to pursue what you were saying, I think we're getting at two sides of a story. The, the obvious story is the bodies littering the street. That's the most fascinating part of it. Yeah. Now, there's another side of the story. 
There's no question this gang war will be, at some point, will be solved. Uh, incidentally, when do you think it will be solved? That's a hard thing to say. There are some rumors about uh, intercessions being made. We don't know that for certain. Uh, but I suppose in time it will. It, it will be resolved. There's too much money at stake for organized crime for them not to resolve it. What surprises me about this is the fact that the organized crime let it uh, break out at all. I mean, this is not publicity which they seek, obviously, and it brings heat from you, it brings heat, it brings heat from the journalists. Well, sometimes the, the higher-ups in organized crime can't stop it. You have insurgents in all kinds of groups. We have them in politics, we have them in organized crime, we have them in corporate structures, mm. where minority groups attempt to take over a larger structure, so that uh, more often than not they can't prevent it. Once it breaks out, they then can make peace at a price. The ultimate payer of that price being the public. Uh, what, what do you think is involved? I mean, is this a, a struggle for territory, or is this a personality thing, or what? No, I don't think it's a matter of personality. I think it's a matter of, of territory. We're using it in its very the word in its very broad sense, meaning a struggle for uh, to take over illegal operations which produce money. Um. If the public is also the victim, then as I gather what you're suggesting, the public is also the, the conspirators, in a sense. Well, the public is, is cooperating with them inadvertently and unwittingly uh, because of a lack of understanding. Well, I never the, see organized crime. I don't see them on the street. I don't go to prostitutes. I well, don't in a labor union. And then you I don't, don't gamble either. You don't I, gamble with bookmakers. Okay. The bookmaker is directly related to organized crime. If they place their wages with OTB, Instead of with organized crime, they'd be hurting organized crime. What the public doesn't understand is when they bet on a horse or a basketball game or a baseball game or whatever sport it might be, they are, in fact, supporting organized crime. They are producing income for them because organized contro crime controls all of the major bookmaking that takes place in this country. Do you think, then, that the shooting kind of reveals... Does it, is it fair to say that the shooting reveals one that the organized crime is very much? I mean, what does it reveal? I mean, it, you know, it seemed like they'd gone quiet and gone away. They're going to legitimate business. Their sons are going to college, and uh, the mafia is going to, or the organized crime is going to disappear. Well, I that's mean. only some of the things that they've done. But when they go into a legitimate business, they don't go into it to remain legitimate. For example, we know uh, time and again, the companies which they take over suddenly go bankrupt after being milked by those who have infiltrated the business. Uh, they engage in price fixing, the taking over of industries where if you want work done in a particular area, construction work, you must be dealing with companies controlled by organized crime, the trucking industry, automobile dealerships, real estate, where you're dealing every day with organized crime and they are using it for illegal purposes. They just don't go straight. I mean, is it fair to say then that the killing reveals, if nothing else, this war that's going on, that organized crime is still very much alive? I don't think there's any question about it, that organized crime is very much alive and in existence and probably will continue to be until we get the kind of action that I think is necessary. One, we've got to devote more manpower ourselves to it by government giving, giving us the facilities to do it. Number two, we need cooperation on the part of the public. Now, I think that's critical that the pe people must come to understand the impact that organized crime is making on their lives each and every day, that the money that organized crime earns, that's, is, they're taking it out of our pockets, that the government is suffering. But, you know, we're all talking about taxes these days, and justifiably, they're rather high. But perhaps taxes would be lower if we could get organized crime to pay income tax. Now, you know, realistically, that's not going to happen. But if we could stop the flow of money to them and, and take that money and funnel it into legitimate sources, our tax rate, I say, would be affected. The prices we pay for the merchandise we buy in a department store would be cheaper. Organized crimes getting involved with the credit card business, which they have done. Now, we are paying for it every time they steal. Do you think then in the, in the last analysis the story may not be so fascinating or fun to read? Well, it's, it, it's all the, <laughs> uh, dramatic things such as killings, whether it's organized crime killings or any, any other killings, obviously, are, are always going to interest the public. I think all we have to do is pick up the newspapers every day, and they're a business too, and they're in business to sell newspapers and advertising. 
And so they print the things that people want to read. And crime is always a fascinating subject, and people are going to continue to be fascinated by it. As, but the real story, as I see it, is, is the need for the people to know that this does affect them. Okay, just shoot some silent reverse if we...